new Juicy J release, Rack's Band Business. Now let's get into it, man. Alright, for all of you who may not know who Juicy J is, allow me to introduce him to your life. Now, Juicy J is a Southern hip hop entrepreneur who have been in the rap game for years, of course. Now, the guy usually sticks to his standard, talking about drugs, clubbing, strip clubs. He used to be with a set called 3-6 Mafia, who originally called themselves Triple Six Mafia because they talked about a lot of demonic shit, and yet this guy is never being associated with the Illuminati and shit like that. I guess he's not rich enough to be a part of, you know, a fictional club or whatever. But he had that song, Bands Make You Dance, which is true. These bands does make these hoes dance. And he may have led to the downfall of Katy Perry being with that he featured in Dark Horse, which got over a billion views and got his name appearing all throughout the whole world. Now, of course, he has this newest album and he has a lot of big name features and he comes back to a friend of his, Project Pat. I haven't heard him in a while, but shit, let's just get into it, guys. So I'm checking out this album because I haven't really been a Juicy J fan and I can't really hate this album is the bomb. There are sections and parts of this album that I wish were better like the skits on this album. Like the first skit, which is the first track of the album. I guess it has one of his friends talking about Juicy J going Hollywood but it doesn't really feed into like any of the uh, whole other songs. I guess the first sketch is introducing us to the whole song Feed the Streets and how his friends think that he went Hollywood, but he's just trying to educate his friends in the ghetto and hood that all you have to do is grind hard with music and that's how you make these millions, you know. A pretty nice idea you know it has this repetition of I gotta feed the streets I gotta feed the streets that's nice but the whole skit that was on no English where at the end of the song you have his parents talking Juicy J mother and father talking which was a sweet moment I just wish that it was on a better song than no English like this song is about drug dealing and how, and they even make a reference, Travis Scott made a reference that his friend, he's back because he did not know how to speak any English. I, I really think that the cops would get a translator uh, for his friend if he didn't know how to speak English. He had to speak some type of language. They would definitely get a translator, which little baffled me like what the fuck and that's not the only time a guest feature ruins like a song for me like on the song flood watch offset makes a quotation that this girl's ass so fat that it turns him it makes him blind like offset what i even checked the lyrics that's how that's how the lyrics was like this girl's ass so fat it makes him blind. I get that it would maybe improve your vision because you want to stare at that big ass. But how does a girl's ass so fat make you blind? Like I literally looked the lyric up. It's it's it, he literally said that. And by the way, here's the lyric. Ass so fat that I went blind. Like what? I mean, he makes a reference of a gold mine, and I guess, well, gold's not even known to actually make people blind like that, so that doesn't make sense, and he's saying that the girl looks at him like a gold mine, like, just a baffling lyric, like, what the hell?
And I know what he was referencing to the whole idea of strap. But when he said that, and then right after that reference, he referenced fucking a bitch. I was just thinking, like, a dildo or whatever, like a strap on. Like, oh, oh, okay. And then he mentions the word trap, which is also another word for, like, a transsexual or a woman or a guy that can pass off as a as a woman, like on some chingy shit, and I was like, oh, I get what he's saying, but the shit just doesn't sound really that, that cool on the song, and speaking of that song, um, the song Couple and the song Only One Up, like, it pretty much talks about the same thing, with Couple talking about he's just gonna take a large amount of drugs, and Only One Up is talking about how since he took the drugs, he's now the only one up. Which, you know, seems a little sad. She on me, she want that. We communicate on a higher level. Them pussy lips, talk back. Fucking on a- I just wanted to play that little snip bit. Like, when he says those pussy lips talk back, I'm like, just cringing, like, oh, shit, really, man? Really? Wow. That's, that's kind of seemed like a, a simp. That's kind of seemed a little simpish right there. I was like, what the fuck? Really, man? You couldn't, you couldn't come up with a better concept or idea than that? And Unsung Ain't Nothing. He referenced getting paid like ghosts do. Now, I'm going to give him credit and say that this is a reference to power. But then he talks about buying the rap game. And he says brick fair. Like, I know a brick is cocaine, and I know he it could be a reference to how dope his music is, but brick fair, like, what, what, like, I know that fair is like, uh, like something you pay on a train, so how the, how the hell, I don't, I don't get the correlation or connection to the whole rap game and money for the rap game, I, I just don't, don't know what the hell that means. And when it comes to the tracks Drop a Bag and Buckets, it seems that this album has a love for things that is being carried or carried out. But Drop a Bag seems a little strange because he doesn't really reference a brag. He just talks about, you know, uh, uh, you know, just talking about how he will blast on your ass. And of course he has that yeah ho sample, which gets annoying when you do like it like a hundred times. Then he does a reference to Bucket for some reason. Like I don't know what what he means by the whole term or use of buckets in this song. It just seems like he's just referencing buckets. Is he talking about throwing up buckets of cash, buckets of water? I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Like that little quote right there, you know, usually in reference to a rainy day, you mean a bad day. But he says... He's the weather man. Every day is a wa- rainy day. Now, I know he's talking about how he throws cash around and make it rain. But, you know, I, why Why even mention the other guy saving his cash when you're not going to really comment about it? You know, just seems a little bizarre and shit like that to just even mention it. Like, you're not even downing him for, like, uh, saving all his money just seems a little stupid. And Dodging the Snake is a pretty awesome song, but it's only two minutes long. So it's one of the best songs off this album, but it's only two minutes long. And, you know, I like the whole idea of the real outlasting the fake. But overall, I mean, hey, only two minutes long. I mean, what can I say about this? This is a Juicy J album. You know, it gets repetitive at points. 
you know, you really hear him taking all these drugs and you kind of wondering, is this guy a damn druggie? Like at some point, and does this guy just have a little tent in the club? Like, what, what's up? I mean, hey, it gets a little bit repetitive, even even though it's a short album, still gets a little repetitive. There are just unplaced or just awkwardly placed skits in the album, and I'm kind of feeling five on here. You know, but hey, that's just me. Please like, subscribe, share the video. And if you like Juicy J, then comment below. Listen to this album all you want. But hey, I'm not really caring or feeling for it. You know, stuff like that. Blah, blah, blah. Peace. Doo -doo.